Chapter 65 But it seemed, or must have seemed to any infinite being capable of watching it as it moved now, that the thought was a mad thought. With the time control open to the limit, and a touch of the space control, it fled across the universe at a velocity such as no other thing was capable of. One star it flashed to a disk, loomed enormous overpowering then suddenly they were flashing through it. The enormous coils fed their current into the space coils and the time field, and the ship seemed to twist and writhe in distorted space as the gravitational field of a giant star, and a giant ship oppose, as space field fought for a fraction of time so short as to be utterly below measurement. Then the ship was gone and behind it a star, the center of which had suddenly been hurled into another space forever, as the counteracting, gravitational field of the outer layers was removed for a moment, and only its own enormous density affected space, writhed and collapsed upon itself, to explode into a mighty sea of flames. Planets it formed, we know, by a process such as can happen when only this man-made accident happens. But the ship fled on, its great coils partly discharged, but still far more charged than need be. It was minutes to Talso where it had been hours with the ancient mariner, but now they traveled with the speed of thought. Talso too was the scene of a battle, and more of a battle than Ordal had been, for here where more powerful defensive forces had been active, the Thestians had been more vengeful. All their remaining ships seemed concentrated here. And the great molecular screen that terrestrial engineers had flung up here had already fallen. Great holes had opened in it, as two great forts, and a thousand ships, some mighty battleships of the intergalactic spaces, some little scout cruisers, had turned their rays on the struggling defensive machines. It had held for hours, thanks to the tremendous tubes that Talso had in their power distribution stations, but in the end had fallen, but not before many of their largest cities had been similarly defended, and the people of the others had scattered broadcast. True, wherever they might be, a diffused molecular would find them and destroy all life save under the few screens, but if the Thestians once diffused their rays, without entering the atmosphere, the broken screen would once more be able to hold. No fleet had kept the Thestian forces out of this atmosphere, but dozens of more adequately powered artificial matter bomb stations had taught that respect for Talso. But Talso Apo's own ray screen had stopped their bombs. They could only send their bombs as high as the screen. They did not have Drake Apo's, S tremendous control power to maintain the matter without difficulty even beyond a screen. At last the screen had fallen, and the Thestion ships, a hole once made, were able to move, and kept that hole always under them, though if it once were closed, they would again have the struggle to open it. Exploding matter bombs had twice caused such spatial strains and ionized conditions as to come near closing it, but finally the Thestion fleet had arranged a ring of ships about the hole, and opened a cylinder of rays that reached down to the planet. Like some gigantic plow the rays tore up mountains, oceans, glaciers, and land. Tremendous chasms opened in straight lines as it plowed along. Unprotected cities flashed into fountains of rock and soil and steel that leaped upwards as the rays touched, and were gone. Protected cities, their screens blazing briefly under the enormous ray concentrations as the ships moved on, unheeding, stood safe on islands of safety amidst the destruction. Here in the lower air, where ions would be so plentiful, that did not try to break down the screens, for the air would aid the defenders. Finally, as Thet oppose, as forces had planned, they came to one of the ionized layer ray screen stations that was still projecting its cone of protective screening to the layer above. Every available ray was turned on that station, and, designed as it was for protecting part of a world, the station was itself protected, but slowly, slowly as its already heated tubes weakened their electronic emission, the disk of ions retreated more and more toward the station, as, like some splashing stream, the Thestion rays played upon it forcing it back. A rapidly accelerating retreat, faster and faster, as the disk changed from the dull red of normal defense to the higher and bluer quanta of failing, less complete defense, the disk of interference retreated. Then, with a flash of light, and a roar as the soil below spouted up, the station was gone. 
it had failed. Instantly the ring of ships expanded as the great screen was weakened by the withdrawal of this support. Wider was the path of destruction now as the forces moved on. But high, high in the sky, far out of sight of the naked eye, was a tiny spot that was in reality a giant ship. It was flashing forward, and in moments it was visible. Then, as another deserted city vanished, it was above the Thessian fleet. Their rays were directed downward through a hole that was even larger. A second station had gone with that city. But, as by magic, the hole closed up, and chopped their rays off with a decisiveness that startled them. The interference was so sharp now that not even the dullest of reds showed where their beams touched. The close interference was giving off only radio. In amazement they looked for this new station of such enormous power that their combined rays did not noticeably affect it. A world had been fighting their rays unsuccessfully. What single station could do this, if the many stations of the world could not? There was but one they knew of, and they turned now to search for the ship they knew must be there. Quote, no horrors this time, just clean, burning energy quote, muttered Drake. It was clean and it was burning. In an instant one of the forts was a mass of opalescence that shifted so swiftly it was purest white, then rocketed away, lifeless, and no longer relux. The other fort had its screen up, though its power, designed to withstand the attack of a fleet of enormous intergalactic, matter-driven, fighting ships lasted but an instant under the driving power of half a million million suns, concentrated in one enormous ray of energy. The sheer energy of the ray itself, molecular ray though it was, heated the material it struck to blinding incandescence even as it hurled it at a velocity close to that of light into outer space. With little sparkling flashes battleships of the void after giant cruisers flashed into lux, and vanished under the ray. A tremendous combined ray of magnetism and cosmic ray energy replaced the molecular, and the ships exploded into a dust as fine as the primeval gas from which came all matter. Sweeping energy, so enormous that the defenses of the ships did not even operate against it, shattered ship after ship, till the few that remained turned, and, faster than the pursuing energies could race through space, faster than light, headed for their base. Quote, that was fair fight, energy against energy quote, said Drake delightedly, for his new toy, which made playthings of suns and fed on the cosmic energy of a universe, was behaving nicely, Quote, and as I said, Stel Felso the U, at the beginning of this war, the greater power wins, always. And in our island here, I have 500,000 million separate power plants, each generating at the rate of decillions of ergs a second, backing this ship. Quote, your world will be safe now, and we will head for our last embattled ally, Sirius. Quote, the Titanic ship turned and disappeared from the view of the madly rejoicing billions of Talso below, as it sped, far faster than light, across a universe to relieve another sorely tried civilization. Knowing their cause was lost, hopeless in the knowledge that nothing known to them could battle that enormous force concentrated in one ship, the thought, the Thestians had but one aim now, to do all the damage in their power before leaving. Already their tremendous, unarmed, and unarmored transports were departing with their hundreds of thousands from that base system for the far-off island of space from which they had come. Their battle fleets were engaged in destroying all the cities of the Allies, and those other helpless races of our system that they could. Those other inhabited worlds, many of which were completely wiped out because Drake had no knowledge of them, were relieved only when the general call for retreat to protect the mother planet was sent out but Sirius was looming enormous before them. And its planets, heavily defended now by the combined Sirian, Terrestrial, and Venerian fleets and great ray screens as well as a few matter bomb stations, were suffering losses nonetheless. For the old sixth of Negra, the third here, had fallen. Slipping in on the night side of the planet, all power off, and so sending forth no warning impulses till it actually fell through the ray screen, a small fleet of scouts had entered. Falling still under simple gravity, they had been missed by the rays till they had fallen to so small a distance, that no humans or men of our allied systems could have stopped, 
but only their enormous iron bone strength permitted them to resist the acceleration they used to avert collision with the planet. Then scattering swiftly, they had blasted the great protective screen stations by attacking on the sides, where the ray screen projectors were not mounted. Designed to protect above, they had no side armor, and the sixth was open to attack. Two and one half billion people lost their lives painlessly and instantaneously as tremendous diffused moleculars played on the revolving planet. Drake arrived soon after this catastrophe. The Thessians left almost immediately, after the loss of 300 or more ships. 150 wrecks were found. The rest were so blasted by the forces which attacked them, that no traces could be found, and no count made. But as those ships fled back to their base, Drake, with the wonderfully delicate mental control of his ship, was able to watch them, and follow them, for, invisible under normal conditions, by twisting space in the same manner that they did he was able to see them flee, and follow. Light year after light year they raced toward the distant base. They reached it in two hours, and Drake saw them from a distance sink to the various worlds. There were twelve gigantic worlds, each far larger than Jupiter of Sol, and larger than Stwall of Talsoapo, S. Sun, Rennell. Quote, I think, quote, said Drake as he stopped the ship at a third of a light year, quote, that we had best destroy those planets. We may kill many men, and innocent non-combatants, but they have killed many of our races, and it is necessary. There are, no doubt, other worlds of this universe here that we do not know of that have felt the vengeance of Thet, and if we can cause such trouble to them by destroying these worlds, and putting the fear of our attacking their mother world into them, they will call off those other fleets. I could have been invisible to Thetapos, as ships as we followed them here, and for the greater part of the way I was, for I was sufficiently out of their time rate, so that they were visible only by the short ultraviolet, which would have put in their infrared, and, no photoelectric cell will work on quanta of such low energy. When at last I was sure of the sun for which they were heading, I let them see us, and they know we are aware of their base, and that we can follow them. Quote, I will destroy one of these worlds, and follow a fleet as it starts for their home nebula. Gradually, as they run, I will fade into invisibility, and they will not know that I have dropped back here to complete the work, but will think I am still following. Probably they will run to some other nebula in an effort to throw me off, but they will most certainly send back a ship to call the fleets here to the defense of Thet. Quote, I think that is the best plan. Do you agree? Quote. Quote, Drake quote, asked Ford slowly, quote, if this race attempts to settle another universe, what would that indicate of their own? Quote. Quote, hum that it was either populated by their own race or that another race held the parts they did not, and that the other race was stronger, quote, replied Drake. Quote, the thought idea in their minds has always been a single world, single solar system as their home, however, dot, quote. Quote, and single solar systems cannot originate in this space, quote, replied Ford, referring to the fact that in the primeval gas from which all matter in this universe and all others came, no condensation of mass less than thousands of millions of times that of a sun could form and continue. Quote, we can only investigate and hope that they do not inhabit the whole system, for I am determined that, unpleasant as the idea may be, there is one race that we cannot afford to have visiting us, and it is going to be permanently restrained in one way or another. I will first have a conference with their leaders and if they will not be peaceful the thought can destroy or make a universe. But I think that a second race holds part of that universe, for several times we have read in their minds the thought of the Oppos, mighty warless ones of Venon. Oppos, quote. Quote, and how do you plan to destroy so large a planet as these are, quote, asked Ford, indicating the telectroscope screen. Quote, watch and see, quote, said Drake. They shot suddenly toward the distant sun, and as it expanded, planets came into view. Moving ever slower on the time control, Drake drove the ship toward a gigantic planet at a distance of approximately 300 million miles from its primary, the sun of this system. 
Drake fell into step with the planet as it moved about in its orbit, and watched the speed indicator carefully. Quote, what oppose, s the orbital speed, Ford, quote, asked Drake. Quote, about 12 and a half miles per second, quote, replied the somewhat mystified Ford. Quote, excellent, my dear Watson, quote, replied Drake. Quote, and now does my dear friend know the average molecular velocity of ordinary air, quote. Quote, why, about one third of a mile a second, average dot, quote. Quote, and if that planet as a whole should stop moving, and the individual molecules be given the entire energy, what would their average velocity be? And what temperature would that represent? Quote, asked Drake. Quote, good why, they would have to have the same kinetic energy as individuals as they now have as a whole, and that would be an average molecular velocity in random motion of 12.5 miles a second giving about 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 12,000 degrees centigrade, quote, exclaimed Ford in surprise. Quote, that would put it in the far blue-white region, quote. Quote, perfect. Now watch. Quote, Drake donned the headpiece he had removed, and once more took charge. He was very far from the planet, 